at WESUFM.org. Every Wednesday, starting at 6.30 p.m., every Wednesday, mixed live, only on Fusion Radio. You're listening to 88.1 FM WESU Middletown, a community service of Wesleyan University. Up next is The Business Buzz with Jeff Sherman, taking a look at innovative and cool technology and businesses right here in Connecticut. Catch The Business Buzz each and every Friday afternoon at 4 p.m. as part of our Monday through Friday 4 p.m. local talk block. Only on 88.1 FM WESU Middletown. The Business Buzz on WESU is proudly sponsored in part by Carlson and Demir. Located right here in downtown Middletown, Carlson and Demir, providing legal representation for victims of serious injury and for those facing criminal charges. On the web at carlsondumir.com, 860-819-1034. Yes, welcome to an uh, edition of the Business Buzz, a midsummer plus edition of the Business Buzz. We have uh, Chris Calandra in Studio B. We've got a lot to talk about, and um, we invite our callers, our listeners, to call in 860 860-685-7700, 685-7700. Chris, the first topic I'd like to throw out at you is a question, binary. <laughs> I like it. Is Trump insane or is it a reaction between the embedded state? Meaning that, let me just explain a little bit, meaning that there's so many forces against him that there is a bunker mentality. So the question is, is he nuts or is it the embedded state just kind of crushing him down or is it a combination of both i would frame it differently he is and he would describe himself as this he's a fighter he says if you hit me i'm gonna hit you twice as hard and he's a counter puncher and i think that he is really ornery over how he's been treated how he's been portrayed and the way that he handles it a little different than bunker is he is in attack mode he's plays okay offense. but is he turning on him like oh we use the bunker mode might as well talk about you know hitler in the bunker or whatever is you know turning on all his generals and all that kind of stuff uh obviously not we're not comparing both but you know that kind of siege mentality is he kind of feeding from within like in other words turning on his own like Priebus and even bannon's not safe it's it's hard to tell because so much of this is um, unnamed sources and anonymous sources. It's it's really difficult to tell. I'll give you one thinking on this, and this is a little maybe conspiratorial, but he's gone after Jess Sessions quite a bit. And this comes, Jeff, from probably a viewpoint that I think Donald Trump is way, way smarter and strategically a very sharp thinker, is that he's going after Jeff Sessions so that later when Jeff Sessions does something... Um, that is what Donald Trump wants to have happen, um, then what are people going to say? We hated Jeff Sessions. We thought he was a racist. Now we feel bad because he's being treated badly by the guy who hired him. And then later, what are they going to say? I think he's you setting think he's this up for later that on. smart? I do. No, I'm not doubting. I do. Uh, the proof will be in the pudding. We'll have to see. But it happened with um, you know James Comey, all these... All these Democrats and media figures talked about Comey's this, Comey's that. He deserves to get fired. He's not doing a good job. Unprecedentedly bad decisions. And then once Donald Trump went after him, Comey became be like Jesus Christ himself. Came to Sermon his defense. on the Mount, yes. So there were lots of people that went after Jeff Sessions, and now they're defending Jeff Sessions in many but aspects. But Jeff Sessions did screw up. Oh, I, I don't blame I Donald mean, Trump a, for being m mad at Jeff Sessions. Okay, let's talk about this. What the heck is this? Okay, I'm being totally objective, and I invite our callers to call in 860-685-7700. 685-7700. You have the embedded state. I believe this whole thing with the Russia investigation is, mu is a nothing burp. 
and it's dangerous because let's look at you know the the people that are pushing us especially democrats well but basically everyone in the embedded state right um any evidence chris at all that russia had anything to do with this no okay the investigation's been going on like six months at least i believe the real reason is because the entrenched power base cannot come to grips and it's both republican and democrat that an outsider won and told them they're full of you know what that yes. is in the core of what's going on yes D- so you need to undermine like you got the job you got the job this great job chris but you did it because you blackmailed the ceo because you didn't get it on your own merits it uh, it undermines your credibility they're trying to tear down the presidency and this is the uh tool that they want to use to try and bring that about but uh, but where are know, the republicans pushing back they're all part of the same entrenched state aren't they they're part of the same entrenched state and you know some of this stuff is you know xyz met with the ambassador from russia you know russia is an important player on the stage and the russian ambassador's job is to know what's going on in the united states when you expect that the ambassador would meet with senators and people from various campaigns and people from various departments. Yes. It's completely normal. But y- and yet the media is elevating it to the most salacious. Yeah, you aspect meet with that anyone that's be. Russian. You could meet with ISIS. And by the way, the Obama administration had many people from the Muslim Brotherhood in their administration. Do you know that? I mean, you know, mm-hmm. influencing their administration. Yes. Hardly ever reported. But you just talk to a Russian. Just talk to him or her. There's some kind of collusion. I think it's dangerous. And the other thing I find amusing is the very people, especially liberal Democrats, that probably couldn't invade Rhode Island, right, are brass you-know-what against Russia. Very, very strange. Explain. Yeah, it is It is very strange. But to to be fair, Jeff, I mean, I do think Russia tried to influence the election and they did play games with the election. And that is bad. But that should not be confused with the this notion that there was collusion and they were working together at the expense of the interest of the United States of America. Yeah, I th- but don't you find it a little dangerous that the very people that couldn't put a battle plan together oh, yeah. to invite invade Rhode Island, they need a diversity plan and, you know, blah, 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 uh, unisex, unisex bathrooms uh, are now brass knuckles about a nuclear power of Russia. I couldn't agree more. And let me just add, I think we have a caller we'll have join in, but... Remember that Russia invaded the Ukraine, Crimea and the Ukraine under President Obama's administration. I didn't hear hide or hair about that, about President Obama allowed that to happen. And we talked about it on the show. Especially with the open mic comment that give me a little slack. There's a lot to be said, but we do have a caller. Sorry, Chris. Caller, are you there? Caller? Yeah. Yes. Hello. How are you doing? Good, good. I am not sure I heard what. Both of you guys said are probably one of you, but as I, I was driving, but I catch a little part. As if there is nothing in the Russian investigation, that's what you're saying? Yes. I, no, 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 not nothing. Nothing of any substance, I think. that. But that, how do you know that? And here is where I differ with you guys, is that Donald Trump run, and it's not a law that you have to show your tax ID, as you guys are aware of. But there's, there's no law that says that. There's no law. It's voluntary. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There's no law. But previous presidents before him have done it. Yes. What, what it is about Donald Trump that he's so different, that he believed that he... Because I that- think they would be completely foolish, this is my opinion, for Donald Trump to release his taxes because the liberal biased media would have a feeding frenzy of anyone that's a multi-billionaire, has holdings all around the world, takes deduction, does all these other things. That's another uh, another false narrative to throw people off message. Um, but I don't think Hillary so. Clinton think has so. done more shenanigans, and no one talks about that than Donald no, Trump. No, no, no. Don't say that. I listen to the media, and they don't have her, too. Probably not as much, but they do. Because this old Benghazi thing, if she was in office now, yeah, and, and in Benghazi, she would be all over. I don't think it would be much different from Trump being in office right now. It would be the same kind of politics. It's just that one is Russia. The other one would be Benghazi. 
and and to finish my point is that if if he just show his tax return, that would clear up a lot of cloud, my brother. So he's part of playing this kind of politics too. Okay, and it so work, see, it works like, for I, him, and he's going to continue to play this way. Trump okay, is so, I, I like, I like so, your I like your point in terms of that. It make might make sense. In other words, you feel that if he released his taxes. That it would prove either he has Russian connections or not. Is that your point? But it's simple. It's simple, my brother. This is not college stuff. This is pre preschool. It's simple, you know. So so he's playing into this too. Well, I, 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 I think that you're right that Trump plays into into this not by not the with the taxes necessarily, but some of his actions. Chris, what do you think? The caller does have a good point in terms of the taxes, but what's your view on it? Yeah, it's it, there's a chance the taxes would um, demonstrate that he either did or didn't have f- lots of financial interest in Russia. But well, let me I, ask you a question, Chris. Real quick, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. What's wrong with having if you're a multi-billionaire international uh, real estate developer? What is wrong with having first you then the caller? What is wrong with having Russian connections? Me, me? Yeah, I'll ask the caller first. Sorry, Chris. Well, I am not saying it might be wrong from my point of view. You know, I'm not into this big politics like everybody else. I'm just a citizen of the United States trying to make a living. So, I mean, it's good to get along with countries, but but you have to have disclosure. Can I, That's can, all I'm, I'm not, saying. I'm not, I'm not trying to interrupt here. I just got a tweet from a caller. Yes, I'll throw it out to you and then Chris real quick. Trump releasing taxes wouldn't show anything. Most people don't understand legal business deductions. First caller, then Chris. Does the uh, tw- person that just tweeted me have any uh, have a valid point? Yes or no? What, what was the point again? The Hello? point is, if him releasing taxes would do nothing because people don't understand business deductions anyway. Well, what you're talking about, people? We're talking about the government. These are the people that need to know, and then they will filter that down to us. I don't know anything about taxes. It's one of the most complicated tax code in the world. But, I mean, that's what the government and the big lawyers and all of that, that's what they're here to do. That's their job. This is not my job, whether or not I understand. They are the ones put there to understand these things. Okay, Chris, do you want to comment? And by the way, before you comment, uh, we got another tweet, believe it or not. We've been doing that lately, by the way. Yeah. That um, Trump has connections all over the world. That's the nature of international business. So hello. Sure. Okay, so what do you say? Let's wrap it up. What I I would just say is I think Donald Trump took how Mitt Romney ran a campaign and he modeled his campaign off of that. And Mitt Romney played by the rules and released his tax return and he basically gave his opposition a club Thank to you. beat him with and Donald Trump decided right wrong or indifferent his strategy was I am not going to give my opposition a club to beat me with and I agree with that Chris a thousand but, percent but, but, but my brother isn't that part of the classification of becoming a president so no, why it's voluntary and it's not good yeah, but presidents before him did it. Well, presidents, a lot of presidents went into stupid wars before him. I mean, just because people do stupid things doesn't mean you have to. Well, and well, the liberal media, if you ever listen to CNN, it's not one hour, two hours a day. It's 24 hours a day. They might as well call it the anti-Trump network. And I don't have any water to carry for Trump. I don't really care. But it gets a little pathetic. If he released his taxes, my friend, I would... Chris... What do you think? A month of the review? Oh, it would it would it would be more than that because he has very complicated tax returns that are very lengthy because he's got a multitude of business interests and an unfair press would have just pulled out things that like made you know, it yeah. look as bad as possible. And if there was fair reporting, caller, if there was balanced reporting. Um, you know, maybe it would have been different, but that's not would have ha- what that's not what would have happened. And so, I would I have preferred that he issue his tax return? Yeah, probably. But I understand when you're in a contest and you're trying to win, you don't give your opposition a chance to beat you, and that's what Donald Trump did. And enough voters in this country decided that disclosure of the tax return wasn't that important of an issue and he got away with it caller i have one other thing but you're a great caller by the way we can disagree that doesn't mean we're not buds yeah uh, here's here's the last te- here you can have the last word caller you can wrap it up but then we you need to answer this tweet again 
I said this tweet by uh, the by someone in our audience said he'd be tried in the media, kind of to Chris's point, not by the government. So this tweeter agrees with, I guess, you know what we've been talking about that it would be nonstop. That uh, yes, in line seventy-seven, he had business dealings with the Smith organization that is also dealing with blah blah blah. It would never. It would be a never-ending circus. What do you think, caller? Mark said the same thing I was just about to say, too, because with all of this circus, I don't think Trump's going to get too much done because it's too much around this Russia stuff. And it's not good for the country. Now, that I agree with you 100%. What? I was No, no, I agree with you 100%. It's draining the energy of the That's administration. Right. That's right. So it's it's death by a thousand cuts. Yeah. You know, so the, the quicker they put this to rest, and get on with but they do need to put it to rest. We agree. And caller, I thank you for calling. Yes. And you yeah. know something? We don't disagree as much as you think. No, I, that's fine, man. I listen to you guys all the time. You're good guys. Great. Thanks a lot. Take care. All right. Bye. And we invite our other callers to call in and also tweet us at JS Business Buds, 860 685 7700. 685 7700. Chris, you know I like to be amused. I like to amuse myself. So I'll ask you a question. <laughs> How, you're a bright guy, how long would the Trump tax investigation be going on in CNN? No, no, how long? It, it would go over 24 hours a day. For how many months? <laughs> For months and months and months. Maybe um, like, I would say six months? Yeah. And you know, I think the caller, and we again, we appreciate the caller um, joining us. You know, the caller himself said that he doesn't understand taxes, and I don't think the media understand taxes, especially such a complicated return that the Trump organization and Donald Trump would have. And I, I think he made a good, smart— Oh, it was a strategic move. A strategic if he move. did it in the campaign, lights out. And then you know what you have? You have self-righteous, and here's another flip on the subject, 860-685-7700, You would have self-righteous people liberals in, in particular, like Bernie Sanders, who now has three houses. Do you know that? The great yes. socialist has three houses and a net worth of over a million dollars. Uh, Maxine Waters, another activist slash social uh, uh, avenger, yes. has a net worth of, like I see, several, several, not just a million, several million dollars, a multi-million dollar house and a house outside her district that no one ever questions. Do you don't think they would be railing against every little nidbit and tidbit in his return. Absolutely. And they would they would distort it as much as possible. And and and, uh, uh, can we can we double back? Go ahead, though, Jeff, because you mentioned about the administration being in disarray. And I'd like to explore that a little bit because I want your take. My take, though, is that it's not in disarray. He's fighting what I'll say is a two front war. On one hand, he's on the offensive and He's taken on the media, he's taking on the entrenched interest, and he is seemingly out of control. But on the other hand, this talk that he's not going to be able to accomplish much, he got Neil Gorsuch confirmed to... Low-hanging fruit. Okay, I'm, I'm Low-hanging being... fruit. You know, he got us out of the TPP. Great, yes. He got the country out of the Paris Climate Accord. He's actively reduced regulations and through executive action repealed a number of regulations that were put in, in place by the Obama administration. And he's taking on the media and he highlights the fact that the government is dysfunctional, not because of him, because it's that way and it's been that way for a while. And when you're the outsider, that's what he was brought there to do. If you want yeah, to be but a he's disruptor. Not going against, the problem is he's not going, he's got that 40% that's rock solid. 860-685-7700, yes. 685-7700, join in the discussion. But he's never going, he's, he's got a problem. And I also throw it out for your comment and a comment of our listeners that I believe he would have had health care, but people in Washington don't look at our best interests. They yes. look at their own power base, and I believe that they see a weakened president and they smell blood. That's Pat Buchanan said that, not me. They smell blood and they're going after him. I don't. I, and, and the problem, and the problem is, it's not about Trump. Let's not make this show about Trump. It's any outsider, correct, with the embedded uh, power base, would be 
mince me. Trump would probably be the only person, man or woman, that would, could withhold the onslaught. What do you think? I don't know if he's weakened as much as it's their job to. Um, but Republicans oppo- are turning on him. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because we, you know, we've talked about this on the show for a very, very long time. And I know our dear friend Marty is not here. You know, we would talk before Trump arrived on the scene. We would talk about when is America going to wake up and realize that politicians are not serving them. And we would talk about, you know, if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, don't be surprised that you get the same results. And the country did make a significant change by doing something unprecedented, bringing in a business person with no experience with the type of temperament he has. Um, so their job is to oppose him, both the Republicans and the Democrats. But do you think they smell blood? And do you think that it affected him with the health care vote? Because the Republicans are saying, hey, this guy's not quite, uh, his power is a little shaky at this point. I, I'm not aligning myself to him. Do you think he's become a little radioactive? Trump. I think they think so, but I think they are mistaken. That um, is a thousand percent correct. I would yes. agree with that. They think because they're looking at it in the and they all go to the same, you know, after hours sure. party and they're laughing at yeah. this moron knuckle dragging Trump. That's right. And they don't get it. If you're inside the beltway and you're asking people's opinion, yeah, D- Donald Trump is radioactive in Louisville, Kentucky and in West Virginia and in Montana. Um I don't think it's the same way. I don't think in flyover America they care about the Russian investigation, and I don't think they mind much of how Donald Trump is. Um, so what does what does Trump and- do about the Russian investigation? Here, uh, he's up against a rock. I forgot the Rubenstein. I don't know how who appointed Rubenstein, whatever the, his name is, the guy under uh, Sessions. Right, appointed Mueller. A, as a special investi- you know, uh, investigation, right? Yeah. Okay? Which, by Pat Buchanan, like him or not, is correct because he was around with Nixon. Once you get a special prosecutor, forget, there's nothing. They're not, their job <laughs> is not to find you. It's like a prosecuting attorney. It's not to get Chris Calandra off. It's to nail you. Right. By hook or by crook. Right. And that's what a special prosecutor does. It's never going to end. And it happened under Clinton, too, with, I forgot the guy's name, he was investigating Clinton, I think, for his entire administration. Ken Starr. Yes. Yeah. Um, but this isn't a special prosecutor, right? It's Technically, there's some differences between Ken Starr. I think he, and, and, it's close enough. Yeah. I, Independent I, counsel. Yes. But, you know, Donald Trump is just going to fight, and he antagonizes, and he... And, what and, if he and, fires and, Mueller? I think he probably will. And they say... Even the Republic, like Lindsey Graham, there'll be hell to pay. There's hell to pay now. I mean, he's uh, he's he's under threat all the time with the 24-7 media talking about how he's a Russian um, hack and that I, I think he may end up firing Mueller if, if Mueller, and this is my opinion, if Mueller expands, you know, there's talk that he's going to be looking into real estate deals that Donald Trump did prior to the financial crisis. You know, I think if Mueller is doing that, it's so far beyond the question that was at hand about collusion working in concert with the Russians to the detriment of the United States of America. If he investigates that, you know, I think it would be a mistake for Donald Trump to fire him. But if he, in fact, is looking at stuff that's way outside of that, I believe that Donald Trump will fire him, and I think he'll get away with it. And I don't see anything wrong with them. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that because he was supposed to look for Russian collusion in the election, not real estate dealings from 10 years ago. Well, let's see. We have a caller real quick. Caller, you say it's Medicare's birthday, correct? Yeah, it's coming up, and uh, we have a was song it, called what, Medicare for All. Wasn't and, that part of the uh, Great Society, I think? Medicare. Well, you know, you know what? Uh, it, it's part of a better society because, you know, the rest of the world has single-payer health care. They pay half of what we pay, and you know what? Everybody's covered. They just have to take a card into their clinic so or into why their do, doctor. Why, why do we screw it up so bad? If what you're saying, it's you know, the Republicans. The Republicans have screwed it up because every time they get in the office and get a little bit of a bluster and a little few more votes, they, they end up cutting. They're, they're, the GOP should be called the gut, obstruct, and privatize party. And you know, but do you think Obamacare works? No, I, I'm not. A, I'm not an Obamacare fan because it's but, still privatized, corporatized health care. And as long as we have 
profit-driven, corporate-centered health care, we're never going to be able to have affordable health care. And how, as long old, as the how, insurance old, how old is Medicare? Because we want to give it its birth. I say it's 50, correct? No, it was in 64 or 65 oh, when uh, oh, Johnson did it. Yeah, so he, yeah, he's, uh, it, it's been there for a while. And so I guess what I'm saying is it would work fine if every time the Republicans got in, they weren't cutting it and gutting it uh, and taking, trying to, I mean, who were, the, who were all the people voting to take away 22 million people's health care just last night, or 16 million, I'm sorry, it was 16 million last night, it's 22 million last week, and next week it's probably going to be, you know, 40 million. Because when you have a, a Speaker of the House, who's a follower of Ayn Rand, who believed the government should not support services for the people. She did not believe it. And if you don't believe me, watch I the interview it. by Mike Wallace, okay? And Mike Wallace interviewed this lady. I got you. And okay. she, well, and no, she, I, we thank you for the call. We thank you for calling it out. It's Medicare's, I believe. It's called Medicare for All. And as a matter of fact, Medicaid for All would be better. But the term that people are using more right now, and there's a bill that could be passed tomorrow in Congress called H.R. 676. Okay, we, do, we, do, okay we got, a, uh, we got a, uh, a tweet. Maybe you can answer this. This is not me. This is a tweet. Uh, tell the British couple who had to fight for their child's treatment how good singer single payer systems are you know what we, instead of doing that go uh, go find out about a movie called now is the time health care for everybody and you'll find out how much of a lie that is and it's the same thing in canada ask a canadian how they like their health care they love it and laugh at us and say yeah you're killing people while we are healing people up here okay well we thank you for the call so the, the answer to your question that's a stupid question okay, and it is a thank you very much so uh, anyway, it was Medicare's, I guess, so. 55th birthday. <laughs> and uh, But there was no mention, of course, about Obamacare, which was, I believe is a Democratic thing. Chris, isn't it? It was. Um, you know, let me, I know we, we tend not to do health care on the show. And, you know, maybe someday we'll have Marianne O'Hare, a friend of the show, on to talk a little bit about this. No, we won't. But just <laughs> <laughs> real briefly, you know, this idea that all these people would be thrown out, you know, when you uh, throw off like out. 16 million, you know, the vast majority of We're them, I think out. it was two thirds is because they would choose not to buy insurance. Mm -hmm. That's not getting thrown off if Americans of their own free will decide not to spend their money and not get health insurance. But now, let's, say, let's take the caller's point. I'm not a health care expert. Single payer, according to him, that it's half the price and everyone's, I mean, I don't know anything about it, so I cannot comment on something I don't know. Is Do you have any information on that whatsoever? Well, there, there's lots of people that would like to expand Medicare, which originally during the Great Society was put in place to take care the of elderly. the elderly and to use that platform to insure everybody. So everybody would get insurance through Medicare. Um, but capitalism, competition, and people making choices and having choices available for them is, is, a, is a pathway that I think is better than having a one-size-fits-all solution from the government. But, but let me ask down. you a question. You do well in life, and, you know, God bless you. You deserve mm. it. But what if you were one of the ones that by this misfortune— you're you're unemployed. You're up against it. Uh, how do you talk to that? I think it's interesting because a lot of the government intervention into the healthcare marketplace has raised prices, raised costs, and then they come in and say, "Well, you know, you poor schlub, you can't afford it, so we're going to help you." But they created it. When I was growing up, I grew up in a relatively poor household, not uber poor, but lower middle class. And, you know, I remember the doctor would come to our house and you would do certain things and everybody got health. You know, people got health care. It was it was very different, but you have to control costs. And that's a big problem. Getting people access to health care. Yes, but it's got to be at a, 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 a good cost. And just having the government taking all over it has never shown itself to be helpful on the cost part the of it. The tweet line is going crazy. We yeah. have another tweet that says, if Medicare works so well, why do so many people have to buy Medicare supplement insurance, which actually is a good idea? So let's switch gears. Yeah. Let's um, yes. Uh, we're not healthcare experts. But um, so we were talking about uh, the entrenched state. And basically, one of the problems I have with the entrenched state, the embedded state, is that and it's not about Trump because I don't want to have this thing about, you know, Trump good, Trump bad. You know, that's not the issue is I believe that anyone's coming from the outside would be disemboweled by the establishment yes 
And that's what we're seeing played out. Now, Trump gives them plenty of ammunition. Let's just, it's just how it is. Just the way he behaves, the way he acts. Um, I, I have a problem a little with his administration. It seems like, you know, Camuch- Carmucci's in there now. And he replaced, uh, well, who's the guy before him? Spicer. Who was a little out. Now, that I wouldn't argue with because he was a nice guy, but a B-minus player. Would you agree? Yes, unimpressive. Unimpressive. Uh, but then he starts going to the New Yorker and dissing people. It's got to be a crappy place to work, the Trump administration, if half of it's true. Yeah, when you have as many enemies surrounding you that you have to work with, and I say enemies not in the classic sense because that's a little tough language, but when you have people that are out to get you that don't want to cooperate and really would wish you would go away and would do almost anything to make you go away, you know, it's it's got to be kind of tough, but that's the job that Trump petitioned for. That's what he ran on. So he ought not complain about it because that's what he was. He's doing what he was elected to do. I voted for Donald Trump and he is doing what I elected him to do. Is it messy sometimes? Yes. Does he make me cringe in some of the things he does? Yes. But by and large, he's doing what he was brought in to do with all of its ugliness because the government is not serving the needs of the people. So let me let me ask you another question. This health care vote. Yeah. I believe it was a blessing in disguise because, as Trump said, the easiest thing to do, and by the way, we invite our callers to call in at 860-685-7700, 685-7700. We're talking in particular about the embedded state, the entrenched state, the government apparatus that never really leaves, and really the Democrats and Republicans are feeding from the same trough. And like Trump or not, there's many, many things you can really dislike about Trump, but it's really a, 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 an example of someone from the outside trying to change things and people, the entrenched state, loving what's going on at our expense because, Chris, you can't be $20 trillion in debt. When's the last time we won a war? Do you remember? <laughs> a long time ago. A long time ago. And are these wars like in Afghanistan and then I, is there any, and even Vietnam, was there any, before your time, but you're an historian, any was there any thought when any of these geniuses, the best and the brightest, of any kind of end game in Vietnam? Was there any objective? No, and then more recently, and and candidly, I was in favor of them at the time. Like say under George W. Bush, unlike you, who were probably more wise about what was going on. You know, at the end of the day, we didn't accomplish much of what we set out to do. We spent a lot of money, and more importantly, you know, we broke a lot of Americans either killed or hurt or just damaged and not the same because of their experience. And, you know, it, it, it didn't work out. Um, I think but, because there was no objective, and I think some of these entrenched people, these geniuses, Yeah. and we'll talk more about Iraq, but we'll just put the call on real quick. Caller, are you there? Yes. What say you, sir? Thanks for taking the call. No problem. My pleasure. Listen, I just want to know, why do the Americans get all upset? With Russia interfering with their election, where since the end of the Second War, World War with Truman and Eisenhower and all We've done things. our share, haven't we? Uh, yes. Well said. Went to and, Middle and, and, East. Even, and even, even, even recently with the Obama administration interfering with the Israeli elections. No one mentions That's that. That's right. And but we, you know what? They nobody pays attention to that. And all of a sudden, the it's Russians like the first time it's in. ever happened. Yeah, and Duh, we, like they've done we it don't for interfere. Years. Yes, we don't interfere with other people's countries. BS. We only don't. once a day. Exactly. All day long. Great. So let me ask you a question before Chris has a comment. Do you th- do you think um, in terms of what's going on now, and it's not about if you like Trump or not, that's not the issue, is that you have certain, the entrenched power base in Washington would turn on any independent. Do you agree with that? Yes. And isn't it sad that the people that are probably putting the ship basically off a cliff, off the waterfall, don't want any change because they're being enriched at our expense. Don't you agree? Yes, that's what the Chris, do you have a comment? Chris? Yeah, you know, we talk, I mentioned uh, the Ukraine and Crimea before, but, yeah. you know, it's widely reported that we created an environment in the Ukraine and changed the government through election, but we interfered in the election, and that's what got the Russians uh, involved in, involved, and, and why yeah. they took over the Crimea. Now, and that's not to say that the Russians were right in what they did, you know, no. but, but we were fully involved in that dance. 
But and no one talks about it to the caller's point. Chris, that's no. an excellent no, that's point. What, no one mentions it. It's like it came out of the blue. And, and the boogeyman now, it seems like we always need a boogeyman. And now it's Russia. But now it's not Iraq or Iran. This Russia yeah, is right. a dangerous power. You can't be screwing with them. You don't know who no. you're screwing with. Right. I agree with you on that. Well, you know, I thank you. Well, I, I thank you very much for the call. Thank you. You Thanks. have a great weekend. Yeah, you too. Thank you. I think that was a great call, Chris, and I think your point is well founded. That and the caller's point eight six zero six eight five seven seven zero zero six eight five seven seven zero zero. The views on the show or the views of the buzz, not Wesleyan or W E S U. But yeah, I mean, it just didn't come out of the blue. I don't think there's any evidence of. What do you think? Okay, I do think Russia. Did hack some emails. Absolutely. I, I, there's no doubt about that. Absolutely. Um, I have a feeling, if you want my real honest opinion, yeah, it's not like they love Trump, but they feared Hillary. Not because she was good, because she was so incompetent, it scared the hell out of them. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know about that. I do think that. That's my honest opinion. <laughs> hey, Everything, name one thing she touched that worked out. I don't have any. Thank you. But but according to her supporters, she traveled a lot, remember? Yeah. She traveled. <laughs> so so I've been um I've been thinking about this. I want your opinion, Jeff, is so without getting into the politics or the, the policy part of healthcare, wh- who are the winners and losers with this Obamacare repeal and replace? Trump and the skinny is the big thing? winner. Trump uh, is the big winner. Why is that? Because he put up a good fight. The Republicans didn't get it done. And I also think a skinny down crappy policy would have blown up if, in fact, it was this Obama light. If it blew up, they now own it. They don't own it now. The Democrats, they say it's so great. If I was Trump, I would say, "Okay, you got it. We'll see how it all works out. Yes. So so you think so you think. Are Republicans winners like Donald Trump, or is just Donald Trump the winner? Donald Trump's the winner. The Republicans have proved themselves as big, fat, dumb liars. It was all BS. Again, lying to us because, like we talked about before, it's like you're in high school and you say, okay, Johnny, I'm going to take you outside. I'm going to beat the heck out of you. But Johnny's got to go to a job every day. (laughs) Then Johnny has a day off. He goes, okay, Jeff, let's do it. And you're like... Well, we can talk. <laughs> it's the same thing. It was all BS. We're going to repeal and replace. Right. They voted unanimously <laughs> time and time again. And then McCain, God bless him. McCain's, t- okay, I, it's, un- it's very unfortunate he has his you know, disease. But before he had it, I was not a McCain supporter. I think he never got over, just like um, Romney, never got over that he lost and love the the limelight shows up at the eleventh hour to do. Why show up if you're going to vote against it anyway? What's the Chris? What's the point? You're yeah. going to show up. You're not going to vote for it anyway. Stay in bed and get rest. <laughs> so I agree with you. And for because you know we we hear from callers and 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 people we know and tweets about us being just in the bag for the Republican Party. Let's just say, and I think you and I agree, the Republicans show themselves to be completely disingenuous when President Obama was in office, they voted like umpteen times to repeal Obamacare. And when they've had a chance to actually do it and affect the change that they promised the American people that they ran on, they can't get it I done. I think it was a bunch of... A bunch of bums. Nonsense. And both of them, the Susan Collins group, the rhinos, Republican in name only, and then the ultra conservatives because it's not completely kosher. Right. Because they're not getting 100% of what they want. They take their ball and go home. Yeah, go home. Does incompetency, and it shows you what you said years ago. You meet more people that are brighter, smarter, or more articulate in one day. People have to realize out there, the people you have in Washington are not the best and the brightest. Look at Larson. You know, has he done one thing in 20, 30 years? I'm not even sure he's alive. Is he, he alive? He, I think he's on we, life support. Would we, would we know? I mean, What a he, great job. He, you he just, could be in Bali, Bali, just living off the land. What kind of a job you just get elected <laughs> automatically, and you'd get automatically elected. And Has he, you ever, now there was a time like 10 years ago, he was like Pelosi's buddy. Sure. That didn't work out too well. I don't know why, whatever, who cares. He was on some shows once in a while. Never hear from him. Hasn't done a darn thing since I know. Not one bill. Nothing. He'll get reelected in a landslide. Welcome to Connecticut. Yeah. And speaking of welcome to Connecticut, I have something that's going to scare the hell out of you. Ooh. Guess who has plans to run for president? Chris Murphy. Really? 
All right. Talk about being del- you need a psychiatrist. That's delusional. Yeah, if uh, you know, if if the radio listeners could see my face, I'm uh, I- I'm a little I'm a little shocked. I think um I think if you just look at it and I, I agree with Jeff, I'm I'm disgusted with the Republicans because they said they were going to do something. And this is not they said it once or twice or they said it in one. They said it in election cycle after election cycle after election cycle. But it's, it's and all- they voted on it. And when it didn't count and then when it really counted, they just lied to their because, constituents you know why? and being the American fed people. By, they got wined and dined by the insurance industry, by special interests. Because, again, I don't want to make the show about Trump. Trump is right. They're all eating out of the same pig trough. Yes. And that's what it is. We do have a caller. Caller, are you there? Yes, I'm there. What's up, sir? Well, um, I'm listening to the show, and uh, i just like to throw it out there. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on here, and uh, it's really stirring up a lot of thoughts. So you guys are running a great show. Thank great you very callers much. And everything. Um, I guess I wanted to, I suppose, backtrack a little bit. Um, I started thinking about this health care issue. And I, my, in my opinion, I think one of the biggest issues going on right now is the repeal of o- Obamacare would be such a um, such an upheaval to the system that they've created that it's going to, if they don't have a replacement plan in order uh, that everyone agrees to, or at least uh, that passes uh, the general... And actually, I agree, with, I agree with you, sir. How, like, how are they possibly going to get out of it? It was that all was window dressing. It was all crap. They And you know something? It's like, yeah, I'll see you in two years, and guess what? Two years later, nothing's going to happen. It was all to placate, and they couldn't even do that. It really shows, I agree with Chris in Studio B, both parties are immersed in the special interests. They're all full of crap. And do you know something? They all dress it up differently, but they're all feeding from the same trough. Am I not correct? Well, I don't know if it's the same trough, per se. But they're feeding um, from a trough of special interests. I, I think I think there are the majority of candidates in Washington at this point are feeding from the same trough. But I think there's two major competing ideals which are the idea that the government should be responsible for people or people should be responsible for people. I think, you know something, I'll I'll throw out to Chris in a second. I think your second point, which I do agree with you, that people should be responsible for the people, that train has left the station. I believe, hear me out, and then Chris, is that I believe that the embedded power base has a vested interest in big on both sides, Republican and Democrat, that the very idea of people taking care of themselves put bureaucrats out of business. They'll have nothing to do with it. First, Chris, then you call her. Chris, what do you think? I, I think that's exactly right. And actually, I like the breakdown of how the caller kind like of that. divided up the sides and the thinking and the you know the philosophy. I, I think that's right. Those that look to the government thinking they're not going to be able to help me and others that look to the government and say, I really want the government to help me. But don't you think, and again, I'll throw out a second, but maybe this whole thing with an outsider coming in, the entrenched power base, the bureaucrat would do anything to get rid of an outsider that would threaten yes. their gravy train. Caller, what do you think? Because don't you think that Washington's just been feeding us on us, I think, since at least the 60s? Uh, I, I, would, I would agree with, I agree with your, your idea there, that, uh, that where the narrative is, it's their way or the highway. They, can, they have all the control. It doesn't really matter what the common people think. Um, yeah, but the common yeah, people know that. Was, no, no, that but, was, but, the, but the intelligentsia in the media and in and, and, and government thinks that the common people are trash. You're not smart enough. You didn't go to Ivy League school. You're let us take care of it. We've always been right, aren't they? Always well, right. Well, I think I think there's an there's a, there's two sides to that. And, and on one hand, you don't go to your neighbor for heart surgery. You go to the heart surgeon for heart surgery. Mm-hmm. So someone who's a, a lawyer who understands the ins and outs of the law inherently is going to have a better understanding of how things work than... I don't know. know. I think lawyers have got us into trouble. I think 
that, well, it, that it's enough. Lawyers. Well, that's what we. I think. Look, Aren't look you at repeating what we're eating yourself. Yeah, look at what we've done <laughs> since Vietnam. Okay, we've had one debacle after another. These people. There was a book called The Best and the Brightest. They got us into Vietnam. They got us into you know trillion dollar deficits. These people are so bright. Why are they screwing up so bad? I contend you couldn't try to screw things up as bad as they have on both sides. It's not Republican or Democrat. What do you think? Well, uh, I, I, I guess what, what, what would be the cause of that other than corruption? I because mean, it, is, it is corrupt. No, it is corruption, caller. It's corruption and it's so self-empowerment because you can have a bloated representative like Larson that's done nothing in business. He would be fired immediately. He's been hanging around for 30 years and done nothing and is probably a multimillionaire. How do you like that one? For doing absolutely. Absolutely zip. That's why the system is broken. Don't you think so? Well, I, I, I think so. So how do you enact change? That's um, that, one of what do you think? I think you got. I think you guys were on the point with the last uh, few episodes, actually, where you brought on the third party yeah, libertarian yes, yeah. candidate. Great I actually thought he was a very impressive person, very impressive speaker, and um, uh, as far as. I mean, with a national focus, you can only influence so much change. Washington's going to do what Washington is going to do. You know, but I think the libertarian, even our, our good buddy there, Rob, would be disemboweled if he ever made it to the White House. He's a bright guy, but because he's not talking the talk and walking the walk, it's a coup attempt, and that's what we're so, having right now. So, so that's the grassroots, that's where grassroots need to come in. You start with the local town government, you start with the senators, you start to gain influence, with people who actually represent the populace versus these competing opinions that uh, five media companies that control, what, what, what do you say, like 90% of all the media on the national television and things like that. This is one of the only free-form radio stations where you actually hear independent. Oh, God, you know, the opinion. media could make your... Great caller, by the way. Uh, but, hey, I'll, know, I'll open it up for other people. You got um, it, but a great call, and you. you're so right about the media, Chris. He's right on board because you have entrenched, bloated bureaucrats 860-685-7700, 685-7700. And corporate media, CNN, MSNBC, and even Fox, no, no insights, no discussion. You'd have to be a moron to sit in a chair. You'd, your mind would turn to jello 24-7 on, on Russia. And then what he gave a speech... Oh, yeah, about uh, throwing out MI6 or whatever they are, the gangs. Yeah, yeah. And they actually had an expert in quotations on CNN saying, no, Trump doing that is actually heightening gang violence because blah, blah. Okay, yeah. yeah really? Yeah. yeah, you're throwing out the people that are killing people, but somehow in a parallel universe. Yeah. Yeah, okay, genius. But no one challenged it. They're nodding their head. Yeah. Yes, uh, Dr. Genius. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. But, you know, it, it's brain dead. But, but thinking of what the caller said is that if you get more people into politics. But people have for, jobs, Chris. I, I'm sorry. But, you know, in other words, I like what he's saying in theory, but you have basically lawyers. And, you know, who, right. who, who Larson, what, he's probably unemployed when he was running. You have a job. You have good ideas. Tell me where you're going to get the time to run. But I give you just one an anecdotal, you know, but I think Donald Trump, because he kind of broke the mold. And in business, when you break the mold, you get more people that kind of copycat on that. And just one small anecdotal example is you have Kid Rock. I like it, by the is way. He's going to run for Senate. I'm sick of that's, it. It's very non-traditional. That's outside the box you know what thinking. You, I, I like it a lot because I am so done with intelligentsia, the geniuses, yeah. the he theoretical. Didn't, he didn't go to Harvard. Yeah, he didn't you. go to I, Yale. I, I, he didn't go to Stanford. That to me is thank you very much that you didn't. And by the way, we did get a tweet. How do you like this one? <laughs> Murphy will do as well as Dodd did when he ran for president. Remember Chrissy Dodd? Yeah. That lasted about... I had dates last longer than that. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we have or we're coming up against it. I think this has been a very good show, and we do have some time, so we can invite our callers eight six zero six eight five seven seven zero zero six eight five seven seven zero zero. I think this BS healthcare um, vote or lack of a vote on both sides, the Democrats opting out, voting present, Republicans you know, who voted every time, and there must have been 10 votes against it when it was time to do it, opted out, proves to me we need a third party. What do you think, Chris? I think we need a third party or like 
Donald Trump did where he kind of co-opted the Republican Party vessel is I I think you need a takeover in these parties. McConnell's got to go. Pelosi's got to go. Paul Ryan's got to go. And uh, who Schumer has got to go, even though he just became the minority leader in the Senate. Um, And if you get more different candidates coming into the fray, using Kid Rock as an example, and the Democrats need this as much as the Republicans do, is that, you know, maybe you can affect change and, and change the trend line. It won't be easy, though. We did have a caller, Larry, he just had to take his comment because we had actually had two callers on the line. Cool. That um, he said that term limits would be a big thing. I thank you, Larry, because you are absolutely we agree. correct. And 100%. then we have another caller. Caller, are you there? Caller? Oh, would help if, um, yes. Caller, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good. What say you? Okay, I think that we the people have forgotten our power. Years ago, uh, when we wanted to in- invoke our power, we uh, stopped buying gas for a day. Mm-hmm. Okay? So we the people should show the congressmen who get these great, great health care benefits and lifetime benefits and all that kind of thing on our tax dollars, and then they start wars on our tax dollars. I agree. Oh, I they have said. more investment. Okay, we should withhold our taxes. Everybody take a tax extension. You want to see the uh, Congress people pay attention to us? You That'll know something? Happen. I like your chutzpah. I like it a lot. I really do. But let me throw something out. I think we became a nation of capons. We've lost any kind of spine. We're so easily, we were more interested in the Kardashians. Meanwhile, we're getting screwed. Yeah, I like, we're being I like mind what you're manipulated saying. by the TV. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we're brain dead. You couldn't do it with a drug. We're just right. so stupid. And then when you look at the media, CNN right. dribble and, and, and Fox dribble, dribble all day long. No insight into anything that's really going on. Okay, what is going on in Afghanistan? Gee, we kind of dropped that because of Russia. You know, we're sending trillions, having people die for absolutely nothing i think you're right our government is right. out of we've control. become the bullies of the world instead of being a proud american yeah, yeah the bullies of the world though, with no outcome though do you mean yeah the outcome there's an outcome oh yeah invested in guns or the military oh yeah they're making big profits there's an outcome well Where's i think, I think also i think going? also you know god bless him i don't wish him any ill will but Senator McCain never went, met a war he didn't like. You ever see him say not get involved? You mentioned John McCain on Meet the Press, so-called he's the expert on everything. It's like, yeah, we need to you know, get involved in this. We need to push yeah. back at that. These people are, and I think this whole anti-Russian thing, caller, forget about taking sides, you know, what happened, you know, with this and the other. It's dangerous. You had Pagowell, he used to be an uh, aide for uh, the Clinton uh, White House, talked about bombing Russia. Are you insane? So I think it's escalated into craziness, yes. but I love your call. I wish but more people had chutzpah like you do. Thank you very much. Repeat votes on the health care, repeat all that, and then watch Donald Trump. He is we lost her. seeing anything that he's doing. That's my opinion. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, much for the call. I appreciate, appreciate your chutzpah. Yeah, you know, I think we need, like it or not, we're a ma- we are a nation of capons. It's like, duh. I, I think she, I think she brings up a good point. But Jeff, this was an amazingly good show. I haven't been here in a little bit. The callers, oh, wait, were, I think we still might have a call. Hold on, keep talking. The Sorry. callers have been tremendous, and we love that we get callers across the ideological spectrum, and we could call in, and we have good conversations. Uh, we might differ in opinions, but it's a respectful dialogue. And I know Jeff and I and Marty, who's not here, we wish we saw more of that in the mainstream media who not only like the politician, they, they're like the politicians, they're failing the American people I agree. on well, the street. You know, so I think just by dumb luck, I, we had we actually put two on hold and we did have Larry, but then Larry, Bo- we did all that great thing. Larry, we're sorry. I'm sorry, Larry. But uh, we have like two minutes left, 860-685-7700. I think, uh, Chris, this was an outstanding show. I think it was even-handed. I think it's um, it's good. It was all good. And we do have a last call, and you're reflecting. Yeah, it was, it was a very good show. And this is the type of dialogue and debate that I wish we would see more of because Americans have much more in common than we're led to believe if you listen to the politicians, especially the leaders in the political parties, and it, what the media portrays. We have much, much more in common. And... To the last caller's point, the uh, the woman who called in, if we could harness that power as the American people, we can affect change and get Washington to go back to working on our behalf as opposed to 
working only their for own, the special interests. Yes, and we do have a final caller. Final caller. Whoop, final caller. Are you there? Final caller. No, he hung up, but he did say a good um, a good point. Oh, that's weird. He did have a good point that he said Congress needs to go, and I think that's true. When you have people like Larson, and there's many others, sure, a bloated politician that has done nothing, probably worth several million yeah. now, that is no better than a banana republic. M- McConnell in the Senate should go, 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 and Pelosi and Ryan, all of the leadership in the Congress should go. Great show, Chris. A-game, baby. A-game, A-game.